So here I am in my studio. <laughs> That's such an old joke now, but it's too good. Uh, seriously though, I thought I'd talk about uh, acoustics. And so you're looking at some back there, back there, and then uh, right up above here. And I thought I'd talk a little about what they are and why they're important. Real simple explanation. All right, guys, let's make this real simple. So sound comes out of here, out of here. You know, the sub, the tweeter, and this guy just has a little mid-range speaker. But some's, sound is gonna come out of here and it's gonna travel to the listening position, which is right here at my desk, okay? And same thing with over here. Sound's gonna travel and come in over here, okay? So there's a direct line from the sub here and the tweeter here down to the listening position. But sound doesn't just travel in that direct way. Sound also travels, well, it really travels just spherically out from the speaker. And so it also travels, for example, over to this wall, and then it's gonna bounce off the wall and come back to the listening position. And so let's quickly go over this again. So here we have, uh, let's start with this guy. The, we have this speaker, okay? Now sound's gonna travel out of the speaker to the front wall. It's gonna bounce off the front wall, come back to the listening position. And so I put this um, acoustic absorber right here so it'll absorb those uh, sound waves that are bouncing off the front of the room. And the next one, as we just discussed, the sound's going to travel out here, bounce off the wall, but it's going to be absorbed so it doesn't come back. Okay. And then again off the ceiling, bam, it gets absorbed and doesn't come back. And finally, in the back of the room, it's going to come back to the back of the room is going to be absorbed in that corner, the low frequencies, is gonna be absorbed by this guy before it comes back to the listening position. And so that's the point of all these guys, of this guy, this guy, this guy, is to absorb all the sound waves so that the only sound wave that the listening position is really getting is the direct sound wave. So all those delayed signals are now absorbed. What's up guys? So this is a picture of my room here. We got the listening position, the two speakers, the two walls, and the absorbers on the walls on the left and right. And so as we said, the ideal scenario is if we just got a direct signal coming from the speakers to the listening position. Now of course that's not reality, is it? No, no, no. Reality is that sound travels spherically out from the speakers like this. Now, if this absorber wasn't here, the sound would bounce off this wall and go back to the listening position like this. And so we have a bad situation here because we have the direct signal that's coming to the listener. Then we have a delayed signal that's coming back to the listener. And here's the delayed signal. Okay. Now, as we talked about before, that's kind of like when you're in an auditorium and you hear reverberation or echoes coming back to you. The same thing happens just on a smaller scale in a smaller room, okay? And so what that does, that distorts your perception of the direct sound. It, the sound is now affected. And so you're gonna be making decisions based on the sound that the room has now affected. But that's not even, uh, I mean, that's obviously not a good scenario, but the scenario gets worse. It gets thicker, we might say. So sound also travels to the back of the room and it comes like this, okay? It also bounces off of this wall and comes back, all right? And so now what happens is we have this spaghetti mess of clashing sound waves, of clashing frequencies, and this is really bad, okay? Not good. Okay, that's bad. Now the question is, why is that bad? Well, let's look at a couple scenarios here. The first scenario is, let's just draw a sine wave here. Sound wave, okay, this is a very crude representation of, a two-dimensional representation of a, of a sound. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to introduce another sound wave, okay, because we have tons of sound waves over here. We're going to introduce another sound wave, and we're just going to introduce another sound wave that's exactly the same as this first one. So here we have two sound waves that are clashing, but they're pretty much the same sound wave. So what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to have an amplified signal, okay? So these two highest points are going to add, okay? And then these two lowest points are going to go down, okay? So we're going to have a very... Um, we're going to have uh, a sound wave in which the amplitude is increased, okay? And so when the amplitude increases in a sound wave, that just, we perceive that as louder volume. Music is a complex sound wave, 
okay? It spans pretty much the range from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. So what happens is when we have a situation like this, this doesn't happen to every frequency. The boosting doesn't happen to every frequency. It might just happen to one frequency. For example, let's say it happens to 100 hertz. Okay, so we have a boosting of 100 hertz because of two uh, sound waves that are the same sound waves that are combining. So over here, the signal is going to come from the speaker. It's going to go through this mess of clashing sound waves. And from that mess of clashing sound waves, the listener is going to hear a sound that has an increase, increased 100 hertz. So what's the listener going to do? Well, he's going to certainly decrease 100 hertz. So when he takes the mix out of the room, he's going to be taking a mix out of the room that has lower, uh, lower 100 hertz. It doesn't have very much 100 hertz, so people are going to say, where's the power? Where's the bass? Okay, it's all about the bass. You can't take the bass away. But that's what happens, okay? That's what happens when you have an untreated room. It's going to, the room is going to af uh, affect frequencies. It's going to boost them. It's going to cut them. Okay, so let's look at the next scenario. So here we looked at the boost scenario. Let's look at the cut scenario. So let's draw another sine wave. Okay, but this time we're going to draw the inverse of this sine wave. So it's going to look like this. And so what happens here? Well, we see that the lowest port part of this wave is the highest part of this wave. So what happens is it just cancels out. All right? And so we have a total cut. Now imagine that happened to 100 hertz. So what happens? Well, as the sound comes from the speaker and crosses through this ridiculous mess of clashing frequencies and sound waves, uh, 100 hertz is going to be gone. So the listener doesn't hear any 100 hertz. So what is he going to do? He's going to boost the crap out of 100 hertz. And so when he takes his mix out of the room, what happens? Well, people are going to say, oh, way too much bass. It's way too boomy. You know, it sounds really muddy. You know, muddy is usually reserved for 300 hertz, but it's not going to sound like a very clear mix because the low end is overpowering the upper frequencies. All right, so those are the two scenarios we looked at. We looked at maximizing the amplitude, and we also looked at cancellation. And then we also have everything that happens in between to the entire frequency spectrum. Okay, so maybe 100 hertz is really boosted, but maybe 4K is only a little bit boosted. But we're going to have small boosts and small cuts across the whole spectrum because of, the, because of this, because of sound bouncing around in the room and the room affecting the, the, what the listener is ultimately going to be hearing. So that's why that's bad. It's bad because it affects what you hear and affects the decisions that you make on your mix. Your mix might sound fantastic in the room, but when you take it out, it's going to sound like crap, okay? Because of all these minor adjustments that you made to try to make it sound better in a crappy room. If it sounds, if your room is properly treated, then if you take it out of the room, it's going to sound great anywhere, okay? Because you were listening to the direct signal, and that's why absorption is really important. There's a saying that goes, um, if you can't take your room out of the mix, don't take your mix out of the room. And so I hope you guys can understand what that means now. If you can't take your room out of the mix, what does that mean? Every room is going to impart its own signature, if you will, onto uh, the sound, the sound that the, the listener is hearing. And so you're going to make decisions based off that room. Okay, and so that's you not being able to take your room out of the mix. When you put up this, uh, absorption or diffusion, you're taking away the effects that the room has on the signal that you're going to be listening to. Okay, and so your room isn't going to be a factor in the decisions that you make. And so that's how you can take your room out of the mix. But if you can't take your room out of the mix, don't take your mix out of the room because it's going to sound like crap. Okay, <laughs> pretty much. And so that's it for today. I hope that explanation was simple enough and you can see the value of having uh, absorption. And you can also have diffusers like I have right above me. Um, I have a video on how to make those if you want to check that out. I'll put a, a, a link right here. That's the first time I ever did that. But um, you guys, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please like the video. And if you have any questions at all, leave a comment in the um, comment area and I'll try to get back to you. I try to get back to every single person that has a question. I think I do a pretty good job. So um, 
All right, guys, I'll see you next video.